Arsenal news today, ladies and gentlemen. What's going on? It's Egal Talks for while. We're back again with another video, and I need you guys to do me a big, big, big favor. Don't go anywhere else to uh, to hear about Arsenal transfer news. I've got you guys covered the entire summer transfer window. Do me a favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button while you're here. And today, what we got to talk about is a juicy story for you guys, ladies and gentlemen. Pedro Neto to Arsenal. Who says no? Let me know in the comment section. Do you guys think injuries are a problem? Do you think he could be a really good player and help us get over the line to win the Premier League? Also, Fabrizio Romano has given us an update. Plus, we've gotten other uh, people also backing Fabrizio Romano's claim that a bid for Emma Smith Rowe is incoming. All this plus more on today's video. We're going to get into it. But before we do that, as you guys always know, we got to do something else first. Bang. <laughs> Yes, 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 people. So since yesterday's update was a little bit longer and I made like a 17 minute long video, this one's going to be a little bit quicker. We don't have too many stories to talk about, but the first story we got to talk about is not Emil Smith Rowe. It's not outgoing sales, but Pedro Neto to Arsenal. This is going to be the main section of the video where I ask you guys, who do you, do you guys say yes to Pedro Neto? Pedro Neto to Arsenal. Discuss it in the comment section. Let me know. Would you take him at Arsenal? Are you are you interested in Pedro Neto? Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about Pedro Neto. Would you take him at Arsenal? Are you would you say Pedro Neto was would be an upgrade or somebody that could benefit us in the long term at Arsenal? We're gonna look at his injury history, and it might not be as bad as people think. Although the past couple of seasons has been poor. Um, and we're going to look at some of his stats, but before we go any further, you guys should know that Pedro Neto, his contract is currently at Wolves until 2027. He is, of course, 24 years old. He's a right winger who, who can also play on the left side and has shown a lot of versatility throughout his time at Wolves. He's been at Wolves since the 2019-20 season where he has been outstanding. Standing, I would say, and he has been an integral part to that Wolves team year in, year out, giving us problems. But let's find out what the news says. The news says that Arsenal have held preliminary talks with Pedro Neto's agent this week, and the player it has made it clear that he is prioritizing a move to Arsenal. The club view Neto as a potential great addition to their forward line and have been told $50 million would secure a deal for Pedro Neto. So compare Pedro Neto to Nico Williams, he would cost a lot less uh, in wages. But I think Nico Williams has less of a risk due to injuries. And of course, he's shown how dangerous of a player he is. Both players would be amazing, but Pedro Neto would, would be cheaper on wages and probably more willing to take a lesser role than, uh, than Nico Williams. Uh, being that he's not a starter for Portugal, where Pedro Neto just lit, Nico Williams just won the whole thing. Um, I don't think we're going to get Leal. I don't think we're going to go get Rashford. I don't think we're going to get Danny Almo. All these other guys that we have been linked to throughout the window. Sane is not really hearing much about Sane anymore. We're not really hearing much about other wingers that we've been linked to throughout the window. Pedro Neto, though. Who's this, who's this source right here? This is Team Talk in Scotland. Uh, news, news. So not the most unreliable source, but still, we got to take it with a grain of salt. Personally, I think Pedro Neto is too injury prone, but I hear the fact that he has been quite good in his time in the Premier League. Like if I just look at his statistics before we go any further, Pedro Neto's statistics for Wolves, he has had last season in 20 games, he had two goals and 19 uh, assists. In 2022-2023, he only played 18 games and was injured for most of the seasons. And if you guys remember, in 2021, he was up there as one of the best young players, playing 31 games. 20, uh, 2019, in his first season, played 9, 29 games uh, and had 3-3. Three and three. He was never really an output guy, but he, when he plays, he's somebody who creates a lot of chances. Chance creation is a big part of his game, and he was one of the best 
at chance creation. Now, a big issue with Pedro Neto is his injury record. So as much as I'm going to look at the positives, I'm going to look at the negatives. Um, since 2020-21 season, he missed 300 days there. That's 52 games in for club and country. Another 27 games between October to February. What That's over 127 days. Then he missed another 11 and 12 last season alone. So that's a total of 23 games that's missed right there uh, for club and country. That is a lot of games being missed by Pedro Neto. If you, if you calculate all of his injuries, you can see there Pedro Neto has had 23, 27, 52 in three years, he's had well over 100, in, 100 games missed due to injuries. That is terrible, might I add. And as a club that's been plagued with injuries, we don't want to sign an injury-prone player. So that is the biggest scare for me for Pedro Neto. 50 million plus his wages, we're going to have to really find so we're going to have to see if his hamstring injury has been resolved and his knee injuries and his ankle injuries have been resolved because knee injuries, ankle injuries, and hamstring injuries are injuries that can re that can just come back on a regular basis, especially the hamstring injury that he had twice last season. Hopefully he can get that sorted out. Ankle, you can kind of fix. Um, knee injuries, even themselves, you can kind of fix. Look at Van Dyke, he's been consistent, but you just cannot have reoccurring injuries like this. Maybe it's a little bit unlucky, but I do think that is a cause for concern. Overall, I would take Pedro Neto at Arsenal, but that's just me. Um, I don't think we're going to spend the 50 million, though. We would try to negotiate it down, probably, knowing Arsenal. But yeah, Pedro Neto to Arsenal is a possibility. Let me know, would you take him at Arsenal? Now, the next conversation that we need to begin is, of course none other than uh, this one here. Before we go any further, do me a favor, hit that like button. Uh, Chido Obi Martin apparently met with Manchester United. If my man is meeting with Manchester United, he can go to Manchester United. I don't think they're going to give him an opportunity to play in the first team, especially with the fact that they're constantly signing strikers. I don't think he sees a pathway at Arsenal's first team. And if we're losing players because our first team is too good and these academy players don't see an opportunity to get into it, Fair enough. Let him go and get an opportunity to go play for a team where he's going to be able to get game time and maybe develop and be put into the first team. But yeah, Manchester United, I don't really see them developing too many forwards. Yes, they did have Rashford and Greenwood, and that's pretty, that's pretty much it. If you want to say Garnacho, that's three of them. But really and truly, they haven't developed too many players recently, and especially in the attacking end. I think if he's going to go anywhere, he should probably go to Germany or France or even another another uh, non-top five league just to get game time. He's so young. He's probably not going to get game time wherever he goes. So I would just stick it out at Arsenal for another two years and then, then get a move when you're about to get your first senior scholarship. But yeah, that's just me. Now talking about uh, things that we need to talk about, let's get to this. Where is it? Uh, we already spoke about this yesterday's stream, all of these things we already spoke about. This is what the first thing we didn't speak about. Arsenal are pushing to add a goalkeeper and uh, expected their, uh, expecting their options before leaving for the U.S. tour, which is this upcoming uh, Sunday. We're going to be leaving. So they expect us to get the Dan Bentley deal through the line before Wednesday's game versus Bournemouth. Interesting. That is very interesting. Now, let's get into this. Charlie Patino is also expected to leave Arsenal. And Gabriel Jesus is expected to stay as uh, Gabriel Jesus is highly rated by Arsenal. They rate him as a top five, number nine in the world, and, and still highly rate him. So he's not going to be going anywhere. Fabrizio Romano has given us an update on Emil Smith-Rowe, though. He said that Crystal Palace are prepared to bid for Emil Smith-Rowe, with the player uh, being someone that the new manager at Crystal Palace, Oliver uh, Glass, uh, Glasner, uh, really wants to sign this summer. And of course, we also got more information in, in, the, in the coming hours after that, that Crystal, pa the Crystal Palace are prepared to bid 30 million uh, for Emil Smith Rowe. And it's understood that Arsenal are willing to part companies with the player for around 35 million, says Talk Sport. Now, I think that is the that is the right approach to take. Basically, if you give us a record transfer fee for Emil Smith Rowe, we will give him to you. Uh, no problem about it. Um, we also had 
another report here that saying that Crystal Palace are prepared to offer the 35 million, including bonuses. So this could be a record transfer fee for Arsenal, but Arsenal are expected to reject their offer. Fulham are expected to return with an improved bid. What are we doing? If we're going to get the 35 million plus bonuses, we should take it. Emma Smith Rowe is great and all, but a record transfer fee for Emma Smith Rowe, we should take that and run. I, I think Emma Smith Rowe, Getting 35 million is good business. Don't forget, 35 million is basically 105 million in 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 total sales because you three times it when it's an academy player. It's pure profit, and it goes on the books three times towards uh, financial sustainability and profitability. So basically, Emil Smith Rowe's 35 million pound transfer is the uh, is the equivalent to Arsenal signing 150 uh, 105 million pound worth of signings. Um, next. Um, Mikel Arteta is, of course, going to tell the media that he is not, he does not want to get rid of Emma Smith Rowe, and that he's desperate for him to uh, spring, uh, to to sp springly last season due to uh, due to this departs. So, with the club due to depart for preseason, he expects Emma Smith Rowe to be part of it. Um, the U.S. tour that leaves Sunday with Arteta set to discuss his future. And uh, Cheeto Obi Martin visited, visited Manchester United. We already spoke about that, but uh, confident uh, Manchester United are very confident they will secure him, but nothing is signed yet. Yo, if the kid wants to go to Manchester United, he can go to Manchester United. As for Emma Smith Rowe, if we can get a record fee for Emma Smith Rowe, we take that and we run. No, no disrespect to Emma Smith Rowe, but I think that's a good option for us to do. Also, um, Cal oh, anything new on Calafuri? Uh, Gabriel Jesus is still market value, sixty-five million currently. Interesting. Pepe, Pepe, uh, Pepe looks like he might have retired from football. That's how bad situations have gotten for him. Um, Arsenal looks set to in, uh, an interest in Mark Guehi. What Arsenal is set to end their interest in Mark Guehi as Crystal Palace demand. 70 million for the 24 year old yeah that's too much money that's too much money um as for that that's pretty much it nothing much on nico williams we already spoke about this yesterday on the on the previous stream uh nothing new on calafuri also we're still waiting as bologna are asking for 50 million plus 3 million euros for uh calafuri arsenal's offer of 75 plus 3 basil uh, do not want to uh, do not wish to reduce their 50 million sell-on clause um, even by a fraction. Bologna are waiting on improved offer uh, Arsenal offer in the next three days under the terms that they want. Bologna do not want to give uh, do not want uh, Bologna do not want to give Calafuri to Juventus, but is okay uh, okay region signing despite. No talks between them and Juve. Juve want Tolbe, but no agreement till now. Fuck. Juventus have just jumped back into the race for Calafuri. I didn't think that was a possibility. Now this is worrying. If Juventus jump back into the conversation and the player ends up at Juventus over, over a dispute about three million pounds, uh, three million... We should just pay the three million and just get this deal done. If that's the case, if that's the case that we're just we're just three million apart. But can you really trust the Italian sources to give you the honest truth? They're just probably trying to put pressure on Arsenal to make an improved bid, even though they, they accepted our initial bid, and it's their own dumbass faults for giving Basel a fifteen percent sell-on clause. But yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Nothing more. Nothing less. I thought that was a very intense um, uh, section there because I didn't really realize that they that there was a slight update on that. But yeah, the Calafuri stuff is starting to get annoying. Would you take Pedro Neto at Arsenal? And 35 million for Emil Smith Rowe. I think that's good business. What do you guys think? Anyways, I'm out of here, people. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll catch you guys on the next one. And love for the love. Don't know.